Everybody can uh, find your spots and uh, we'll get going. Before I get, get started into the presentation, everybody should have picked up a packet, some of the new materials at the, at the table and signed in. If you didn't do that, please uh, pick up your packet of materials for tonight. So um, thanks again for, uh, for your participation and your work on this process. We're good to see you all again. Um, we have a, a pretty uh, full agenda tonight. Um, the, goals in a, the goals of tonight are to re uh, review some new materials, some updates. We've got some responses to some questions that you've had. And we're bringing three new options or modified uh, options, options four, five, and six for you to review tonight. Um, and then you're gonna do pretty much the same agenda as you did last meeting. You're gonna break into small working groups and look at those three new options and mark them up and give us your thoughts and see, what, see if we can make any modifications or improvements or, um, or uh, if some of this feedback spawns any new maps and things like that. So again, just wanted to review the overall objectives because they're very important. Um, our overall objectives on this process are to reduce overcrowding in the region and to create viable uh, boundaries to effectively utilize the capacity in the new Northeast Area Elementary School and other schools involved in this study. Um, and also to support the diversity among the schools that reflect the uh, community and the school system and um, the community in this area. As we said, uh, we have stakeholders from all, all of these schools that are listed up here, and they're all um, involved uh, in, in the decision making in this process. Um, and so it's, it's expected that any of these schools could be impacted as a result of this study. So we have some follow-ups uh, regarding uh, some questions and, and things that you had made uh, at the last meeting, at the meeting two. Uh, one of them was um, in prior boundary studies, what percentage of parents utilize that special permission transfer policy for fourth and fifth graders? Um, and you can see um, the answers uh, that, this, that the staff have provided are enrollment and projections are affected minimally by boundary change special permission transfers and tend to, nor to normalize within a year. So that's, that's, that's intended to be a, a, to further reduce the impact on families and students, but it doesn't cause us, us usually typically cause a seismic impact in what we have planned with, our, with the estimates that you guys are, are working with, with in, the boundary, in the boundary options. Usually within about a year, things start to settle down and go close to what, what was intended and, and planned. Um, typically, less than a dozen students have remained at their schools throughout the special permission transfer option, and the highest in recent years has been about 25, uh, approximately a classroom of students across two grades. So it varies from place to place, and, um, and from school, in, in our experience, from school district to school district. But in this in this case, it's not. Uh, you don't have a, a, a very high rate, such as 100% of the students who are impacted staying and, and, and providing and offering and using that special permission um, transfer provision. So another question was, are birth rates factored into the enrollment projections that BCPS develops? And I know that you guys are thinking a lot about not only what we have currently and, and what we're looking at with current students, but also what's down the road and the future development and the, uh, and the future potential of what's coming, coming into the system. And so uh, the enrollment projections that have been generated that you have inside your packets of information use a cohort survival method that does account for um, historical information on the progression of students from one grade to the next. So they look at how many students historically have gone from first to second grade and second to third, and they look at some of those which they commonly refer to as survivor rates. And then the, the number of live births within, the, within Baltimore County. Um, so birth data is factored in. And then data on approved residential units and the number of students that may be generated is also factored into those enrollment projections. So those pro that projected enrollment data that you have in your packet does account for birth data, um, historical trends, and then also a future residential development, which, which is certainly something that is a factor in this area. And there are some information, some, uh, other information in your packet tonight in your handout that's related to this. Another question that you had asked was, could Oakley Elementary get any further relief by moving students to Hartford Hills or Pine Grove Elementary School? Um, Hartford Hills is uh, at 130% and Pine Grove is at 109%. They're both over capacity. So 
Um, it would be very challenging to add to those schools unless you had to move them some and move students out to another school, which you're seeing a lot in this process. In order to, to utilize one school, you move students one place, but then that school gets overcrowded and you have to move some of those students out, which we commonly call the, the domino effect. It's trying, to, trying to, to balance things out. Sometimes you have to make three shifts in order to get a good balance of utilization. And uh, the new capacity at the Northeast Elementary School is not sufficient enough to help relieve the Hartford Hills and Pine Grove Elementary. As you can see with the new school online, you're still operating at around 102%. So, um, so you're still, um, still right at or a little bit over uh, capacity even with the study area that we're working with. Um, there were some questions about elementary to middle school splits uh, uh, that led to the uh, split of a planning block. Um, somebody had mentioned that, Vin that uh, Vincent Farm was split to three, middle, to, to three middle schools instead of two, which the data showed. And we went back and looked at that, and actually there was one big planning block that crossed over middle school boundaries that wasn't picked up. And so you have some new, in your packet of information now, you could see a more uh, a, a corrected and accurate split for Vincent Farm. And I think you had mentioned it's about 30% to, to all three schools, and that's exactly what the data represents too. So um, it, was this, it was a planning block that I'm showing on the screen here um, in the southern part of Vincent Farm that, was, that, that used to be a really large planning block that kind of looked almost a U-shape. We just split it down the line, which is the middle school line, so that we could accurately give you a depiction of the middle school splits. Um, and the new planning block is called Planning Block 161, which you'll see on the new four through six option maps. There was another uh, planning block uh, split suggestion from uh, committee members, and it was uh, Planning Block 138. Uh, and there's a Gerst Road here, and there's two. They're, they're, they are connected by a road, and we, we went and drove through there today and they are connected by sidewalks. They seem, they kind of feel like it's the same community, but, um, but it, does have, it does have some separation and um, along the backs of, uh, of properties here. So we split this along, so the Gerst Road development is in its own planning block. Um, the comments were that this, this community associates more with, with, uh, with communities on the east than the community up in planning block 138. And uh, so, not to say that it's going to be separated at all times, but we, we split it based on your feedback and input. And, um, and I think there is an option that has these separated where this stays in Chapel Hill and this does not. So, just something to be mindful of. The new planning block is 162 right here, and that's represented on your maps as well. There was one other adjustment that we made, the Perry Hall Elementary School walk boundary. Um, this, old, this old planning block uh, kind of stopped right about here, and there was not really any population here, but just, and just to keep things fully in line with the walk zone, we, met, we moved this planning block over about 200 feet to align with the walk zone boundary, and it doesn't affect any population, but it was just another modification that we wanted to note for you to align with the walk zones. So some important reminders because you're working in, we're, we're working in an area and you live in an area that's really undergoing change. There's a lot of growth in this area and spe in specific parts of this area. So it's important not to only look at what we have currently in terms of current student data, but also to look at what's, what's coming down the road and schools that are expected to grow the most with with, as a result of projected growth and things like that. Um, so uh, utilization for the options do represent the 1617 enrollment, but doesn't take into account that projected growth. Those, the, the estimates that you see are as of using that 1617. So you have to kind of also think about, okay, maybe should we leave a school on the lighter side or uh, what, uh, whatever school it may be so that it can absorb future growth that you know is coming. So uh, not only look at the current estimates that you have, but also look at the projections and see which schools are projected to grow the most. I know Vincent Farm has a, a very substantial size development in it that's expected to yield um, a couple hundred students, for instance. So that's one that's really, I think, the most substantial one in this, in this region that's, um, that, is, that is coming down, down the road in the short future. Um, the district has um, proposed a second new elementary school in the region to address overcrowding, and we have a slide to kind of show you that. 
So um, some of the things that you can think of when you're developing options is schools that are near, that are near in the vicinity or adjacent to where this new school is going to go, you may want to consider leaving them a little bit on the heavier side because there's a new school coming down the road and they, they can get some relief within, within a couple of years when that new school comes online. Something, something to consider. Some schools uh, projected to have enrollment increases will have the opportunity for future capacity relief with this second school, like, like I mentioned. And um, seven of the nine schools in this study area are projected to have enrollment increases. So you're not gonna be able to solve, it, solve all of the issues. Um, this, this new school isn't gonna resolve all of the overcrowding issues in this area, but just keep in mind of the different factors and the different pieces of data to study, to, to, to be as proactive as you can and do the best you can to, um, to, uh, with, with not only current data, but also thinking forward. This is the, the new school that's, that's, that, is, uh, that is being planned. It's right here. Um, and uh, I think it's Gum Spring and uh, Ridge Road in that area, I'm pretty sure. And you can see it's pretty close in proximity to Joppa View and Perry Hall and Kearney. And so it's, it's right just south of our study area where we're looking at. So this area could be, these, some of these schools that are adjacent could be in some of the impact area and uh, providing some relief, further relief to, uh, to schools in this study area. So just food for thought. So we have drafted options four, five, and six for you tonight. Um, options four and five were developed based on feedbacks. We took all of your input and your notes and, and studied those and made some adjustments based on your, your input. Um, it seemed that almost every single subgroup they looked at and then when they evaluated option one, two, and three, they, they felt like option three was good with, with some other adjustments. They, they liked three with, with some other adjustments. And it's not to say it was perfect, but, but uh, that was the feedback that we gathered. So we started with option three and, make, and made other further, further changes to those to generate options four and five. The Oakley satellite was eliminated in the new options four and five, which you said you liked three, but you didn't like that satellite at Oakley. And that was one of the things that we did. Also, the new elementary zone is more compact and doesn't span as far south. So that was one of the other things that you had said that the new school zone spread too far north and south in some of those uh, prior options that we had shared with you. And then the schools on the southern end of the study area in options four or five are impacted less with the thought that they may receive relief from future capital uh, projects. So, um, so we did do that. We did um, left Joppa View and Perry Hall a little bit on the higher side in options four and five because of that new school that's so close to those zones, thinking, thinking about that. And we'll like to get your input on that tonight as well. Option six is also a new option. It was developed from committee and uh, community feedback. So we had been uh, receiving input and, and, and other information from you. Um, and so this option six has been developed based on uh, feedback from the community and the committee. And, and again, in option six, the Oakley Elementary Satellite is eliminated. So it's something else for you to, uh, to look at and study th three options and tell us what you like and what you don't like about them so that we can um, keep moving ahead with a uh, focus on trying to accomplish our objectives uh, here in this process. I'm going to go over a little bit of the advantages and limitations of each option like I did last time. Um, option four is uh, shown, shown on the map here and you can see um, it doesn't span as far south, the new elementary school, but it does, it does pick up a lot of the area of gunpowder and then also gives the relief to Chapel Hill up in the northern part, um, but it doesn't wrap around Perry Hall like some of the uh, earlier options. Um, the Oakley Elementary satellite is, is eliminated. Um, there is capacity relief provided to the schools. Um, the demographics don't look, don't look too bad. There are some improvements and there are some areas where it, it, gets a, it, it stays close to what it is now. But um, all in all, it's not a, not a significant, um, uh, uh, it, it, does, it does things to improve it, but not, not perfect balance, which I don't think is possible. The free and reduced lunch percentage uh, of Oakley and Seven Oaks is closer to the study area average. Um, the Vincent Farm lower utilization accommodates that future growth. So you say that Vincent Farm is on the lower side in this option, and you look at that, you're like, wow, that's really out of skew from the district average. But remember, that school has, a, I think it's Greenleaf uh, Plantation, or uh, I can't remember the name of the development, but if you look at that development map, it's a very large area that's 
uh, expected to yield a lot of students in Vincent Farm. It's down in this region of the district, down in uh, the, the, the school attendance area. Fewer students in Perry Hall and Joppa View are impacted in this, in this option uh, with the expectation that they may receive relief from future projects. So you can see Joppa View doesn't have much impact at all, but there is a new school coming in right here. So thinking about tr trying to see, we don't see much more relief planned up in this northern part of the district in this area. So the thought is possibly give them as much relief because they don't have anything coming down the road. But these schools down here do have potential for relief with another school being built right down in this area. Um, some of the limitations of this is Chapel Hill is still on the high side. It's at 108 percent in this in this particular option. So so it is a little on the high side in this in this option. Option five um, uh, is, a, is a little bit of a different look. This one actually does pick up that split that I was talking about for Gerst Road, and Gerst Road stays in Chapel Hill in this option. Um, a different, the difference with that is that uh, also, in order to balance utilization and not overload Chapel Hill too much, we pulled another area here into the new school. But um, this, this area, I studied it and looked at the transportation uh, and how they would transport, get to school, I think the name of the, the road is in, correct, Cowanton, Cowanton Road, did I say that right? So Cowanton Road comes up and you can get to Joppa and you can turn left on Joppa to get to the new school. It's close to about the same distance for them as if they're going to Chapel Hill. So that was just something to, um, something to think about. We felt like it was a viable thing. The Oakley Satellite in Option 5 is, is, is in Kearney now, so that helps resolve that and gets those kids closer to home. <clears throat> Minority percentage is relatively balanced, uh, with the exception of some of the schools on the fr on the outskirts, which is really just not much, uh, not much of a minority uh, uh, population living in the area. Um, free and reduced lunch percentage of Oakley and Seven Oaks are closer to steady area average. Again, Vincent Farms has a lower utilization in this to give them that relief, so they can absorb future growth that's that's coming down the pipeline. And then again, Perry Hall and uh, Joppa View are less impacted. You'll see they're higher on utilization, but again, trying to think about uh, future, um, the future, uh, uh, it, they can get relief from future projects. And this, this option does, some of the limitations is it does impact uh, the, a great number of students, a larger number of students. So look at, you keep an eye on the numbers of students that are impacted in this option as well. Option six is a, uh, as another look. You can see that this option has, um, uh, it doesn't give as much relief to Vincent Farm, um, but in the new elementary school, uh, pretty much comes uh, north and south. It does come down into south of Silver Spring for the new school and kind of wraps around Perry Hall. But the utilization, if you look at it, is, is balanced uh, as it sits looking at 1617 data. Um, the Oakley satellite has is, is been eliminated here, and that goes into Kearney. And there is capacity relief. For the, this option does balance utilization across the board based on the current data, um, based on the current 1617 data. Uh, free and reduced lunch percentages of Oakley and Seven Oaks are brought closer to the study area. And then Oakley splits, splits to one fewer middle school. Um, a couple of things with this option that, uh, that could, could be modified or could be improved is um, you have a little bit fewer walkers in Kearney. The, the walk area for Kearney crosses the road, and there's a, a, about three roads, I think it's 8th, 9th, and 10th Street, right across from Kearney, that um, are not in Kearney in this option. And we went and looked at it. It is right across the street from Kearney, but it's about 15 students or so. So I think it's something that if you wanted to make that adjustment, that could get back, go back into Kearney and keep walkers, uh, keep your maximum number of walkers in this option. It does, uh, this option does span a, a large geographic area, which you had given us the M feedback on one through three about that as a, as a weakness in some of the earlier options and that it does span a large, uh, north to south, a large geographic area. And then um, although, the, as I said, the utilization is very balanced when you look at the current data, what, one of the weaknesses that, that I've identified with this one is that uh, I think Vincent Farm is around 98% in this option. And that doesn't give it much, much room to absorb the, the, the growth that's expected in that particular um, attendance area with the new, new uh, residential development. 
So uh, keep in mind when you were looking at these maps that everything is draft. Everything is subject to change. And this is, as you can see, we're responding to your input and your feedback and continuing to make changes to maps uh, based on input with a focus on trying to um, best adhere to the overall objectives and considerations. Um, we're still not at a spot where we're going to be narrowing options yet. Uh, we're still looking at how can you, what, what, what feedback you can give us on the options that we've presented to you and to, to generate new ones. And at the next meeting, we're going to start filtering things down and maybe weeding a couple of these out so that you can focus on maybe a, a smaller set of options. But um, uh, new options can and will be, cr will be created, and these are all draft and subject to change. Nothing is final until it's approved by the school board, so just keep that in mind. With that, I'm going to hand it to Ms. Bell. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, and thanks again for um, coming out tonight. So um, in a few minutes, we're gonna engage in some group work. And so before we do so, I just wanna uh, reiterate and um, review our group norms and expectations really quickly. So the first one is just um, to, as a group, be inclusive by allowing each group member adequate time and space to voice ideas, opinions, and concerns. And you know, just take your time, allow for wait time be between responses. Um, secondly, spend adequate time considering how each proposed change will impact diverse stakeholders. That goes back to um, Rule 12, 1280 um, and kind of blends into the next guideline, which is being mindful of the boundary study guidelines and using them as a lens or a guide um, to engage in this collaborative process. And then lastly, um, if conflict or even tension arises, just being mindful of your body language, being mindful of your tone, um, and if possible, just use I statements. Um, I don't foresee any real conflict happening, but nonetheless, we just put it out there. Um, okay, so um, it looks like you all are in your groups according to your um, color on your name tag. So we're gonna uh, allow for 45 minutes for you all to re review the draft options um, and possibly come up with new draft, draft options. You should have some post-it notes as well as markers um, on your tables. Feel free to mark up the maps. Um, feel free to write notes on the post-it notes um, and just kind of dig into the process. Um, we want you to look at the uh, three new options, so four, five, and six. Um, and if you want to take a, a second look at one, one through three, you can do that as well. Um, and just, again, discuss as a group what you see in terms of the strengths and limitations and any other suggestions that you might have um, uh, given the boundaries. Um, in your groups, we're asking that um, one person or two people um, take a role. So one role would be the discussion guide. The discussion guide is tracking time and also is um, ensuring that everybody's um, having equal voice. So for example, um, sometimes we use something called step up, step back. If, as a discussion guide, you notice that somebody is kind of dominating the conversation, you might just kind of check in and maybe ask them to step back for a minute and encourage other more quiet voices to step up. Um, so that's kind of what we mean by discussion guide. The reporter usually is one or two reporters. Um, we always share out at the end of our process, so just identifying one or two people to share um, what your strengths, limitations, and maybe additional boundary studies are, um, excuse me, boundary suggestions are. Um, we're asking that one person is a scribe, so if you could just record the group thoughts as you're moving through the process, that would be really helpful. And then last, a parking lot attendant. So any questions that come up, you can write them on the post-it note, and then um, we'll probably answer them during the debrief or take it back, um, you know, and, and have the questions answered for next time, okay? Um, so initially, you're just gonna kinda dig in and look at the draft options. Um, probably 10 minutes before um, it's time for us to share out, we'll give you um, time to um, gather your ideas around the strengths and limitations of each boundary option um, and consider any concerns, challenges, or suggestions related to the planning block. But for now, you're just taking a look at four, five, and six. And of course, if you wanna go back to one, two, and three, you can, um, and just engage in, in that work. Are there any questions? All right, awesome. Does anybody have any questions about the, the material that I presented before? Uh, before you guys break into s small groups or? Um, yes, ma'am. 
I have a, a general question. Um, I dropped uh, one of my kids off at preschool yesterday, and the gentleman behind me said to the person behind him, hey, they're switching my schools. And I said, oh, well, how do you know that? And he said, it's all online, and they're definitely moving me to a different school. And again, I said, well, I'm not sure how you know that. I, I said, everything is online. And he said, there's three options, and that's all there is. And I you know, really explain to them, no, I'm going to a meeting tomorrow night, you know, more options I'm sure will be coming, but I don't know, I guess my point is, is it clear to someone who is not coming to this meeting that these are all ideas? And that's like when people ask me on Facebook, I, that's exactly what I tell them, we are just discussing things at this point, but is it clear on the website? You know, that's, you bring up, it's a great point, and I think you're doing the perfect job in not speculating and telling the, telling the pub, members of the public not to speculate because everything is draft at, through this process, like we've said. Um, we do our best to communicate the fact, the, na the nature of this being draft, and we really, uh, if, if people have questions, encourage them to go to the webpage for this, this process and look at, they can even look at these live streams and look at the videos and they, they can catch up to speed on, and look at, even looking at the PowerPoints will tell them a lot about that and they'll reinforce them with that. We also have a public information session that's coming up in a couple of, uh, in, a, in about a month that's gonna reiterate that and, and invite the public in to hear and have, and tell them that it's draft. So, um, so we, the, we do, we are doing our best to communicate that but in any process that you work with, um, you're gonna see that the people do get that anxiety when they see a map, they think it's a final thing, and uh, you just have to keep reassuring them that it is draft. Chris, did you wanna add something? Uh, yes, and by all means, if you have mm -hmm. any suggestions for the website, if you think there's a way that we could present something more clear, by all means, um, if you use the email tool uh, to link that, uh, you can certainly send us a message with your suggestion. Anything else before you guys break into your groups? Okay, well, we'll let you get to work and we'll check back in here in a, in a few.
do it? Is my mic on? Pat. So it's 7 o'clock. Uh, the agenda has you going to uh, 7.15 in this process. So you got plenty of time to just give you a heads up. In about 10 or 15 minutes, we'll regroup as, and have a discussion.
Okay, so we got about five minutes. If you could uh, just sort of uh, gather all of your comments and your notes and mark up the maps and put your put everything on paper so that we could take it back with us. But we'll give you five more minutes to wrap things up, and then we'll we'll have a discussion as a group. Okay, so um, if you guys are all, all ready, um, does anybody need any more time? Is everybody about ready? 
I know you're having a lot of fruitful discussion. It's really encouraging to see the um, product, productive conversations that you're having. Um, so let's, let's do like we did last time when have each group, if you could come up and uh, hold, the, hold the maps up, up front and one person can talk to the map and give us some of your, uh, so the whole group can benefit and see what you're talking about. And then we'll, uh, we'll keep, we'll move around so everybody gets a chance to discuss. Uh, so who wants to go first? Uh, you guys want to go first? Okay. It is cold. Okay, so we're starting with option six. Uh, this was the one that we did not like. That, as you can see, someone wrote very big, don't like. Um, and the reasons we didn't like this one as much was the, um, first of all, the taking the walkers that go from, that currently go to Kearney um, and switching them to Seven Oaks where they would have to be bussed. And right now they can basically just look out their windows and see the school, so we thought that didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, and then, um, right in this, I'm not quite sure, I guess this is Perry Hall Elementary School. We didn't like how it was very, um, I guess, wide here, and then it gets very small uh, and fans back out again. Um, that just seemed kind of like disjointed. And then um, we liked how, um, let's see, communities forget what we we're saying this one I forget what our note means but it says splits linked communities yeah well, we didn't like that it split it yeah so that was option six um, option four we didn't have as many notes on that one um, we thought that it was good that Perry Hall Elementary School was more cohesive where in this one it was very tiny in this area it seemed a little <laughs> bit more um, cohesive and then our we had a big question of when the new elementary school would open um, that's uh, giving right now the, you know giving Perry Hall Elementary and Joppa View higher numbers because of anticipating the new school being open but when is that going to open and we had asked and someone said about maybe three or four years so we thought that was kind of a long time to wait um, so I think option five was the one that we liked the most. Um, we liked that this part of Cowington, uh, which is expecting a lot of new development, um, would go to the new school and give Chapel Hill some relief. Um, and, and that the same Perry Hall area stayed more cohesive. So that's about it. Hey, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, and just keep your notes and things like that with you at your tables w so that we can take all that home with us. Um, you just want to move down the line and have this, this group over here go next? Might as well get out of the way, right? Okay, so I guess we'll start with um, option four. Um, the note that our um, committee made was that this particular area in, um, I believe it's PB75, has this particular um, set of students, these 16 students walking across a major highway, which is kind of dangerous. Um, they have to have someone you know, come out and watch them walk across there every single morning and again, walk home. So. Um, that's a limitation. Um, there's a limitation here at PB29. This neighborhood in this area is being split when a natural boundary would be Cowington. So um, that was a limitation. The one strength that we felt like was the neighborhood along 40 that's already experienced significant changes for Vincent Farms was actually put back together and they were not being split um, as they are in some of the other models. 
Um, in option five, again, that limitation in this area where these 16 students are walking across the highway is again a secure, you know, a safety issue. And then here along um, PB48 and PB46, in this model separates several neighborhoods and has them going to two different schools, which I believe is what they were talking about, a way, the way that this um, Perry Hall area is separated. Um, in option six, we felt like a strength was, in this particular model, that area of walkers in the corner is eliminated, so they're not walking across a major highway, which we think you know, is a strength. Um, in this particular area down here, this um, planning block going to the new school is in a very congested area, and we felt like this would have them coming up Bel Air Road and Silver Spring to the new school, which is already very congested, so transportation may have an issue getting them to school. Um, and then in this particular model, this is showing that neighborhood that's already been impacted going to Vincent Farms being split again and going to two different schools, which we feel like is a limitation. Okay, good stuff. Good, thank you very much. You guys want to go next? Good evening. Start this way. Okay, I'm just uh, I'm just under their control. Um, <laughs> option four. Um, the strength we saw was that um, the Oakley satellite is gone, uh, but I think kind of across options four and five, we feel like as a committee, we have to decide, do we want to give the most relief we can now or roll the dice that a new school is going to be built in five, four or five years? So if you think that that's going to happen, then four and five can be great options because those schools will get relief. If you don't think that might happen, or there's a chance it might not happen, or you don't want to live with being overcrowded for three or four or five years, then these may not be great options because you're not giving much relief to schools that do need it with uh, Perry Hall and, uh, and uh, uh, Joppa View. So um, it also doesn't take into account that Chapel Hill and Vincent Farm still have a lot of new builds coming. You're giving a lot of relief to Vincent Farm, but there's a lot of new houses coming to that and Chapel Hill. So Chapel Hill is left with a lot of kids over already with um, a lot of kids left to come. Uh, option five does help that sum because the satellite, the little area right here is going to be going to the new school, but there's 200 apartments and 48 single family homes coming there. So all we're doing is just simply passing the buck onto the new school, which is already going to be overcrowded once this is done. And this is underway. This isn't in the pipeline. This isn't up for zoning review. This is being built today. Um, and then Joppa View is still high, Perry Hall as well. Again, these two options have to take into account that the county is going to have the money to build these schools in four or five years, which I think is a big if. Hopefully it happens. Um, option six, for full disclosure, this is the option. I actually put this option together, so I'm not going to say too much about it. <laughs> um, my goal was to give, full re was give balanced relief um, to all the schools, and then uh, hopefully we get the school down below to give relief. Um, this gives Perry Hall and Joppa View help now, and then the, the, the con here is that obviously there's more development coming to, to, these, uh, to the Vincent Farm area um, that is going to be overcrowded again pretty soon. Um, is that it? Did I miss anything? All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> you guys want to go next? So we also um, uh, uh, had a lot of what ifs, what ifs, because we don't know for sure what schools are going to be in the next boundary study that goes with the new school that's going to be built on Ridge Road. And so we also questioned whether if we make a school heavier now, are they actually going to get relief later? And that kind of, uh, we struggled with that with many of these maps. Um, 
Option four, we were talking about um, the Northeast area community. Like we just felt like it just spanned like a, a, a strange, um, you know, circular motion around, you know, two area schools, and we were wondering, you know, once uh, if the new school is built, um, it, are we going to have to formulate that again and, and move that? They'll they'll again be in the new the new school be in the next study. So we're just looking. We were just looking at that. We really had a quandary with that. And then in option five, we were, took a look at um, this area down here, um, PB25. It kind of makes it look almost like it's a satellite, even though it's not like in the middle of an area, but it is across um, uh, on the other side of 95. Not that they would have to cross 95, they would just go via Cowington. However, um, you know, we did look at it, and it is like a separate community. It is doesn't affect. It's not like pulling a group of uh, streets or community homes out of another community. They around them isn't very much. Um, so I understand why we understood why that was there. We just felt like um, it just like it was a standout, like it, it was an outlier on this particular map. And then on six, um, we felt like Seven Oaks had the highest percentage of kids. Um, with the new school in a few years to give relief. Uh, would Seven Oaks be, even be in that study? Because when we were looking at the circular line earlier, it wasn't Seven Oaks, it was more, it was Drop of You and a little bit of Perry Hall. Um, Silver Spring um, should be the line and not, um, and not in the adding communities. We have this little area down here and that community really is connected more with uh, Drop of You and we felt like the rest of it we were okay with. We just felt like this section right here needed to, to just go back down into Job of View, and then we were hoping that that school, when it is in the new boundary study for the new school, will then get the relief. So maybe a little heavy right now, but then in a few years, um, we'll get some relief. And then we looked at these two areas over here, um, and so we have Sorry, I'm not wearing my good glasses, but this area right here across uh, seven has four students, so we were just wondering why that was taken away from Chapel Hill, it's just four. Um, this area here kind of looks like an outlier, but there's 90 students in that area, and it was just really large. We just circulated it, circled it just because it seemed like it was plucked right in the, in the center of um, that one zone, so just something to think about, but the number is huge, there's 90 students. So that would be a, a, a big number for um, Vincent Farm to absorb again. Okay, thank you very much. This is really, really good feedback you guys are all providing. Um, two more groups. You just want to. You guys want to go next? Sure. So we're going to start with number six. Um, when we were looking at it, we thought one of the positives is that it was more equitable in terms of how um, the population was distributed, the students. However, we were concerned because we're moving walkers from Kearney and making them bus ri riders now going to Seven Oaks. Another concern we had was the population over here that right now goes to Joppa View and they're on one side of Silver Spring, shifting them and making them have to go all the way up to the Northeast School. So we're concerned about traffic and the length of the school bus ride for them. So we recommended maybe leaving these students at Joppa View and maybe picking up on the northern end because it's closer and there's less traffic with the back roads in some of these communities. Um, and also a little bit of the concern was just the why in general, just the wide area that the new Northeast School picked up. Um, yeah, we decided to have two talkers because um, we we found that some of us were working on one option while others were working on another. We were getting caught up in um, new construction and 
um, I kind of said to the group, I think we have to focus on here and now um, uh, and, and providing relief for the schools that have been overcrowded for the last 10 years, 20 years. Um, so option four was just not enough relief for Perry Hall or Joppa View. It left Vincent Farm at 82%. Um, I understand they're gonna have a lot coming in, but like I said, um, Perry Hall, Joppa View, a lot of the surrounding schools have been struggling for so long, and this is kind of our chance to get relief. Um, we did say, let me see here, oh, a separate planning block was suggested for P42, P42, PB25, um, because with the 311 apartments being built there in the near future, um, and then another parent had said 39 and 40, planning block 39 and 40 across the street from Joppa View should really go to school um, at Joppa View instead of the, north, the new Northeast School. Um, someone said they can hear the announcements across the street. So um, <laughs> that was for option four. Option five, um, we had mentioned PB89 and PB113, which are directly across the street from Perry Hall, having them move back into Perry Hall out of Seven Oaks, um, because they are across the street and there is not a back road to Seven Oaks from there. They would have to go out Bel Air Road, down Joppa Road to Seven Oaks, and they are across the street. Um, and by doing that, we could give up PB63 to Kearney, but a lot of us aren't very familiar with that area down there, and we didn't know if that was a community connected to PB62. And then give PB75 to Seven Oaks. So kind of like a whole circular effect. Take 32 kids from Seven Oaks, put them back in Perry Hall, give some to Kearney, and give them back to Seven Oaks. And another one with the 311 apartments, the separate planning block. Um, once again, that's another concern down here with this group going to the Northeast School. We really thought that um, they should be part of Chapel Hill. The Northeast School is already at 102%, and that doesn't even include the new planning block. That's it. Okay. Thank you. This is a really constructive feedback that you're all providing. It's very, very helpful. You guys are doing great work. Okay, uh, one more uh, group here. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, our concentration was um, primarily, as you can see, on um, uh, Vincent Farm, um, though we discussed um, all of the different um, elementary schools and the sections. Um, we focused um, mainly on that because that's, you know, as we started to talk, every discussion kind of went back to that. So as we go to, let's start at uh, option four. Um, what we felt was um, for option four, only sending a few students from Vincent Fall to, um, to Perry Hall, um, it was 4% in both, so we're trying, uh, we were trying to get a, for middle school, I'm sorry. So we're trying to um, get an understanding of what that 4% is, um, and that'll be provided. And then once we do, um, did that, we felt as though it was a weakness because if you're taking 4% of every single um, piece of each district and then sending them somewhere else, um, we just wanted to see where, where the concern was and actually where it was and what the concerns were and see if we could possibly merge those back in to where they were. Um, some of the streams are uh, Joppa and Perry Hall have um, higher percentage. They provide um, room for growth. Um, Vincent Farm would have a lower number. Um, the minority percentage improves and um, your percentage um, for every school would improve as well. Um, the negatives would be, um, again, for your middle school, the 4%, which we wanted um, uh, defined a little more in detail, and the new school um, over a large area. Um, as we went to option five, we were, uh, again, focused on that area, and what we looked at was um, some of the strengths were Joppa View, um, Perry Hall, 
would um would lower in percentage and the minority rate would um would would balance out a lot better. Um, some of the um, the limitations would be um, the stretch um, of the northeast area. So a lot of times we were looking at um, what everybody else was looking at as well, which is um, it it looks like it's you know from it it just doesn't look equal distance uh, from a lot of times from a lot of times from point A to point B to get to school. So we figured that would be challenges as far as um, roads and um, certain uh, construction areas. For option six, um, we looked at um, splits in the community. So once again, um, right here, which, which everyone pointed out, um, one of the areas, and both maps had these both together. And, and now in this area is kind of split by, um, by Allender, which is a street in between. But um, we looked at that and said maybe that would be a concern. Um, so the negatives would be um, Vincent Farm would have no room to grow because, of course, in this area with the, the newer mat we gathered, um, the growth is approximately 998 uh, students. So over a course of, you know, how many years before it's built. So um, we also looked at um, planning block 63 and, and 51 that were split, which is uh, what we said here. Um, the strengths were it would lower um, the population for Joppa View and for Perry Hall and um, again, your uh, minority population would um, balance out. Okay, thank you. Oh, w one correction in the, the development map, you know, that one says 997, those were the, that, re that represents the number of units, not necessarily the number of students, but still, it's still a su substantial number, even if it's students or units. Thank but just wanted to make that, make that correction. You. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, so this has all been uh, very good. I'm, you guys are, really uh, doing a great job and giving us this input and this feedback that we need. Um, does any committee member want to make any comments since now the groups have had a chance to each share their thoughts? Is there any committee member that wants to uh, respond or react to any feedback that, each, that any individual group had provided or uh, provide any other input? Yes, ma'am. This might be costly, but you obviously are already giving us a lot of um, detailed information with the color printouts. Is there any way to get us like a transparency overlay of the current boundaries right now so we could lay it over each option and really see what we're taking from and what we're mixing up that way? You know, that question comes up quite a bit, the transparency overlay. Um, and it's, and it's, it's difficult, it's, um, but maybe, on the option maps, there is a current boundary line in a bold, in a bold uh, color. It's like a bold black outline on the on the option maps, but it may not be bold enough. It may not be as prominent, prominent enough for you to be able to really see that. So I'll take note, and on the future options, we can put another make make that line a little bit bolder so that you can clearly see what the current lines are. The um, the on the online mapping tool, it does let you switch between the different layers and views. So that's a really easy way to get at looking, even if you're zoomed in close up, looking at an area and swapping between the different scenarios. Yes. Um, just taking notes here. Hi. Um, I don't know if we've already um, discussed this, but um, what's the estimated population growth for um, each elementary school district from, is there like an estimate from 2017 to 2021 when the new school will be built or? Um, yes, like there is some projection data in your, um, in, the, in the packet, of mm -hmm. in the information. Um, I think enrollment projections were given, at, at the, if right. you look at the materials in meeting two, mm -hmm. there's a projected enrollment in there. Right. And that projected enrollment does account for the developments that were that that are on that development map that you see mm -hmm. but does it go how far i think it goes to maybe 10, ten years okay 10 years it goes 10 years out gotcha and then my second question would be um do we know an average age for um individuals that purchase homes maybe last year 2016 or for 2017. um i don't I'm not sure. Okay. I don't think we have the actual age demographic of, okay. of something, but there have been lots of questions about new home construction and what types of families and how many right. students may come out of them. 
and I've, I've made note of that. So that's something that we'll follow up with you on to give okay. you a little bit better idea of how many students are likely to come right. out or what we have seen in the past out of some other areas. So that's something that I will follow up with you on student yields okay. out of some of that. Thank you. Um, just a little setup question here. Is there any way that we can get the round tables out here for the groups instead of the, um, my back's killing me, no, I'm kidding. Um, she, Sharon, she could hardly get in to know what's going on, switching through the maps. I just think if we have the round tables and we kind of okay. spread the maps out and we're all in a circle, it's more okay. conducive to teamwork. Okay, that's, that's fine. You know, we, I will certainly look at that. Possibly what we do is when you break into your subgroups, you can just, we can have round tables set up and you could just migrate to those okay, to do your small group work. That's good. So, but we'll, I'll, we'll take note of that and make sure that we have some, give you the opportunity to do that. I'm gonna start off saying I may be wrong, but if we could take a closer look, if I, don't, I drive there through there sometimes, but I think planning block 12 Planning block 18, and I know we're planning block 11 and 10 and 9. They're saying that they're communities and they're being split, but I have a feeling that the northern end of that is an older community. I may be wrong. And that the more southern end is a newer home community. I'm not really sure that they're together. So I know we're like really concerned about like this one area being on Vincent Farm and then this one area going to Chapel Hill. Is that, and I, like I said, I may be wrong, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, there is an older community in the planning block 12 and a newer community in the others. However, when those communities were put in, um, they, that was all Chapel Hill, we all went to Vincent Farm. Um, the roads, since they were put in, there are actually a couple of properties that span from 12 into one of the other planning blocks. One of the women that lives there, her driveway would be in planning block 12, and her shed would be in one of the planning blocks going to Chapel Hill. They, it is a small road. The children ride bikes back and forth, and those communities are very linked as far as community involvement. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, that's great, great, uh, great information, and um, it's good to get things clarified because, you know, people who live in the various areas know the area, so it's, it certainly is helpful and useful. Um, any, other, any other thoughts or comments or feedback from committee members? She's talking about those... It was that it was area of Vincent Farm, that the top left corner of Vincent Farm yeah, it was that some right going here. to. I thought this was an older home area. I wasn't, that's I was clarifying. And that this could be s split, but then she said no. So that's why I was just trying to clarify that area. Right, and that was, no, no, I, I don't live there. So I was just was wondering if it could be, because I know there was some. Yes, um, yeah, sure. Do we have a projected date on the new elementary school down on Ridge and Gum Spring? That's a question that has a, that has ris, risen um, by several several uh, people in different groups, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a slide together for that for the next meeting to give you more clarification on that because there were several questions about the projected date for it, and then if you know as when this school was built, how much time did it take when it was in the same point of the process where the other school. So, um, so we'll, we'll work to provide some more clarification on that for you um, in, in advance of the next meeting. Or unless you wanted to provide some feedback? Sure. Um, the new school is actually going into the CIP for this year um, for planning money. And it was expected to open either in August of 2020 or 2021. So the boundary process will actually happen um, a year ahead of that. Okay, so yes. So it is going in for planning. Okay, 
Yes, and so that's so, we, and, we, and we'll also give you some uh, some info on a slide so that you can have that in sort of a tangible format to be able to reference back. Just considering what John mentioned um, when we came up, we were talking about giving kind of some immediate relief because we were saying you're taking a chance on new schools and new things coming in even though it's going into the process of, what is the guarantee, so to speak? I mean, like, is this etch and stone once it goes into what she spoke about and, you know, that happens, it's a guarantee? Or is this something we're still bobbling with up and down? I guess, you know, if she says it's going into the process where the planning, does that necessarily mean it's it or we're still trying to decide in that planning time? Okay. If that makes sense. It makes sense. Hi, uh, Russ Brown. Uh, not only is it going into the CIP, but it's also in the county school for the future plan. And it's um, the CE is committed forward funding for it. Okay, anybody else want to provide any comments? Yes, sir. Um, let's get a mic. Didn't want to sound ignorant, but I'm not a uh, teacher. I didn't know what the, C the CIP is. I hate acronyms. So. That stands for Capital Improvement Program or Capital Improvement Plan. Thank you. Yes, that's the. Uh, Use acronyms all day. Yeah. Write them down. Thank <laughs> you. That's fine. It's it's the long range capital uh, facilities plan that they have a vi vision for the future and, and such for their building. Anything else? Anybody else want to provide any uh, other feedback? Any, it's all helpful stuff. You guys are really giving us a lot of good information. Yes, ma'am. For the new school, will they be closing other schools that will then go into that new school? Like, say they're, whatever this new, the Gum Spring Road. I think I heard, I thought I heard someone say something about a Golden Ring school being closed and those kids going to that new school. Is that? Just the, a rumor I heard. Or? Well, the, the new school that's been discussed over the, down in that area outside of our study area is a it's a new school. It's not a replacement school. It's an actual a, a new facility. Um, I don't know if there's any type of consolidation or any other t school closure closures in the area that but not that I'm aware of. But so let sort of keep these two things separate. We're talking about a new Northeast Elementary School which will go into place around Ridge Road. Okay, that there's a site name for that. In terms of the middle school, middle school boundaries are a completely separate process. The process that we're doing right now is the elementary boundary. And we know that the elementary boundaries are completely separately determined from the middle school boundaries. When in fact that new Northeast Middle School goes into place, just like we're having a boundary process today for the elementaries, we'll have a boundary process for the middles. Yes, and that, 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 that is a great point. You know, you're looking at elementary and middle splits, and like you had mentioned, a 4% split at this and that. But, um, you know, any adjustment that's made in it to elementaries in this process does not change where the, that neighborhood is going to middle school. So if an area gets moved from one elementary to another, that doesn't necessarily assume that that area is going to another middle school as well. This is strictly elementary boundary changes and not, does, doesn't also, the middle school doesn't come along for the ride in this process. Like Dr. Brown said, there will be a whole other process if and when the middle schools are evaluated. Is there a way to find out um, for the next meeting um, capacities for the school? I feel like we need to think about this school as well as the next one. Because right now, because the proposals you made to us, you're thinking ahead but we don't have the tools we need to think ahead for this because you're saying 119 kids are gonna be overcrowded for the next two or three years. Mm -hmm. If you're telling me, well, you're saying 119 kids over. Option four and option five, keep them 119 kids over. Correct? Option four and option five, keep Joppa View 119 kids over. Right, so we're, they may be willing to make that sacrifice if they know what's coming and for some of these schools that are north of that, this is their, this is their golden ticket. This is mm -hmm. probably their last chance to do anything because they're not building another school <laughs> next to the Northeast right. Elementary School. Right. 
So we might need to know how it's going to affect Joppa View because I don't want to say this, for, but maybe we leave Joppa View exactly where it is and give the schools north of that more relief, knowing there's a chance they're going to get a whole boatload of relief with okay. this new school. So it might be helpful to know how that might affect them because right now you're telling us to take a chance, leave them full, overly full, which I'm not a fan of because I want everybody to get relief. But if we're going to do that, then let's maximize that based on what the new school is going to have. If there is another 700 seat school, however crowded is Elmwood, however crowded is Fullerton, is Joppa View right. going to see 200 kids of relief in 2021? So I'd like to, I'd like to know okay. how that's going to play, because it does play into things, because you guys are playing it into it right now. Um, so the new school is um, going in, this, the capital improvement plan that it's going in, it's going in as a 700 seat school. That will actually be paired with the other project that was mentioned in the first meeting or second meeting for Red House Run, which is an addition. So those two will participate in a boundary process together that will span that whole entire area. So it will actually be like 900 additional seats that will be able to go down to Elmwood and Red House Run and up. So, so, so. we might talk about giving job of you potentially less relief right now and giving the schools that aren't going to get anything out of that with the next round as much relief as possible because gunpowder is not getting anything from here on out whether they need it or not gunpowder is not getting another round of relief in five years seven oaks perry hall maybe perry hall the new school chapel hill they're not getting anything the next go round. so if you're saying job of you is going to be is going to be up for the lottery again Maybe we should help, help the other schools cash out with their last chance to do so. so that's what I would say, take into consideration, maybe at the expense of job view. I don't like saying that, but if they're going to get relief right. in two years, what's another 30 or 40 kids if they're going to get relief? They're already that far overcrowded. Mm -hmm. I don't like saying that. but And you keep in mind, too, what some of the considerations in the, the Rule 1280, some of the things, the criteria that you're looking at when you're looking at boundary changes is also account for future growth potential and things like that. So in thinking, f it's, it's really hard to do because you have a study area you're focusing on looking at the schools within the study area. But um, it's also important to also be mindful of other things that are adjacent in some neighboring areas that are gonna get that future relief. And, and, and we know, as we've discussed pretty heavily tonight, some of those areas just south of where we are are gonna get some of that relief, which could provide some relief to those schools on the southern area. Areas, schools further north, like you said, there really there is not much else planned for improve, for expansion or capacity uh, additions, and so and so you know the areas north of, of the area, like you had mentioned, don't really have a whole. Uh, there's nothing in the in the in the near future in terms of capital improvements that are going to give them more capacity. So it's just something that you have to consider. You know, we're look, you're looking at options that have that give that balanced relief across right now. And then there's some, uh, there are some options that have more of a, a weighted relief where there's less relief to the southern ones. So it's really, it's a tough thing to tackle, but it's something that you, know, you just have to, have to consider. And we will we'll follow up with you with some more details about that, about the areas. You have to stay focused on your study area and, and we can't start expanding into the other areas, but it certainly is an area that can impact this study area in terms of giving relief. So it's things to consider for sure. I hate to disagree, but you're asking us to consider the other school. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say we're going to consider it in our numbers, but you can't consider it in the future. So we need to know, is the new school, the new new school, going to be filled up by Fullerton? Okay. Or will there be 300 open seats available for job of you? We need to know that because if you're going to tell us mm -hmm. it's coming and make job of you suffer through another two or three years of overcrowding right. with, the light at the end, with the light at the end of the tunnel, it can't be an oncoming train. So we got to make yes, sure that sir. they're going to get it in the end. So we got to have both. You can't tell us we can't have the other. We have to yes, consider sir. both. So that's, that's just okay. my we, opinion. We can, we can give you information on the area that's south um, and uh, what the committee might want to do when they're considering this, if they're considering, uh, you know, um, waiting later. You can look at those planning blocks at that southern end and get a general idea of how many children are those it, or in those and how much relief that would give if you address those areas later. So you have a general idea of the planning blocks that are down in the southern end for Perry Hall or in those uh, southern areas for um, Joppa View that could be moved. And that might be able to give you a general idea of how many students and then what their results 
consulting utilization would be when you're looking at that, but we can provide some more information next meeting on um, the schools that are in that vicinity of the new school, the other schools, and what their projections look like and where they are. Yes, absolutely. With the new school coming, well, this may be a, a stupid question, but with the new school coming, does it make sense to kind of have an enrollment cut off, being that we have a projected school coming? So kids, okay, so you have an elementary school. Kids are going to graduate fifth grade. You're going to have new kids coming in. Do we kind of cap it off to kind of control the volume of kids that are coming to these schools over this two or three years? Because if you're just, if you're constantly just enrolling kids in a school that you know is already populated, but you're crossing your fingers in two or three years, this school is gonna open, can you control it by who you're letting in the schools over this two or three years? Mm -hmm. With new enrollments, does that make mm -hmm. sense? That, that's, I think that's, I mean, that's that, crossing into more of policy uh, decisions in terms of how well, that's to, what I'm so, asking. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's yeah, no, asking. that's absolutely. Um, I think that it's something to, you know, something to that we can note for the people who are making the policies, the, the, the school board and things like that, um, and, and ways to maybe look at ways to control the overcrowding that's occurring and try to look at caps and things like that. You can provide some suggestions, but really, when, when, as it relates to your group and this group as a committee, you're focused really on the boundaries and with, with the objectives and the considerations that we have. I think that looking at tr trying to, to consider other measures other than moving boundary lines is something that starts to creep outside of, of what your task as a committee is. Got, got you. I was, it, was, it was just a question. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's something that definitely good, good thoughts and good thinking on ways to help provide relief and limit the amount of further overcrowding that's going on. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all notable information. So, I'm, My apologies. So, I'm sorry. So, if I heard your question correctly, and please correct me if I didn't hear it correctly, limiting or capping or, or somehow withholding enrollment of kids into a school? If we know that in this particular school, right. we're at like 700 and something kids. Right. Right, and we're looking at these boundaries, and we really, at this point, really don't have an answer like where these kids are going to go. But yet, we have a school that we're saying some years from now we're going to open up, right? So, if a school is already grossly overpopulated, is it possible that we can kind of start shifting kids somewhere else because this particular school really can't handle the amount of enrollment, you know that? that we're just enrolling these kids. Okay, thank you for, for rephrasing that. So in short, students need to go to their school. They have to go to the school that they're zoned for. So we won't get into magnet schools and other special transfer reasons, but a child moves into, if we're talking job of you, we'll use job of you as that example. If a child and a family move into that catchment area, that child has to go to that school. So I understand what you're saying in, in, in the angle you're using to come from, looking at the future, where we are now. But between now and then, now in 2020, 2021, for Ridge, those students would have to go to Joppa View if they move into that attachment area. We can't send them to another school per policy and enrollment policy as it stands right now. Okay, that's, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Question. Just out of a conversation that we were having earlier was that parking is an issue at every single school. And we were curious with these new schools, is that parking issue being addressed? So you can, and, I'll, and certainly Ms. Benke can fill in. Right now the plans for the new Northeast Elementary School are on the website. So you can see kind of where the parking lots are. So we'll just use the real example of Northeast Elementary School, so the parking for that school will accommodate, based on the drawings and based on the architectural designs, will accommodate the staff that she's going to have and bus lanes. So now with the new designs of schools, you'll see bus lanes are separate from parking. 
so you have a much smoother flow of traffic. So the architects and educational architecture really do take into consideration this is the size of the school, these are the number of potential buses or a bus lane or a bus loop that's separate from parking for staff and visitors and so forth. So that is taken into consideration when these schools are designed. Go ahead. Um, the concern is more for like events and we always say we, you know, we want families involved at the school but with only that bus loop and the very limited staff parking it becomes a problem for American Education Week to have visitors in the school. It becomes a problem for events at many, many of these schools and it just seems like parking is not adequate across the board. Without knowing until the school is built, depending, some events will attract a larger community, will lar attract larger numbers of community to particular events, back to school night and others. So I can't say whether an architect takes into account, okay, back to school night may have X number versus a PTA meeting, which is gonna have a certain number. So I think that's what the school leadership does. The principal would work with, in anticipating a number, they would work with their local precinct. They might work with our office, the community superintendent's office, to say, you know, we're expecting a larger number for this particular event. Let's look at traffic patterns. Let's work with the Office of Safety and Security to look at where people can park, where they're allowed to park, where they're not allowed to park, and then working with the White Marsh Precinct to say, okay, for this night and this event, we're gonna have a large crowd. Can we accommodate for that? But on most other events, we certainly have more than enough parking. So I think that's something the school principal that Mrs. Banky would do, and this, again, using her as an example, would work with her community partners to accommodate that. And I think you're also thinking of schools as they are right now in this area that are some schools that are 120% utilization. And those schools parking is, uh, is a gridlock and it's very crowded and congested, which the new school that we're, that we're working and incorporating in here is gonna provide relief to bring all these schools down. And you know, so it hopefully with, as that occurs, you're gonna get further relief and you'll, you'll notice it not only in the classrooms, but you'll also notice less congestion in the other spaces like parking spaces and things like that as well. Um, yes, you have a question or comment? Yeah, so I had, do have a question. So these utilizations from the projections from 2016 to 2026, these were done um, not considering the new school, I guess is the question, because I'm looking at just kind of some these statistics, so for example, Joppa View, which we've been talking about a lot, 2021 has 122%, and then in 2022, it drops to 114%. So there's just an 8% drop there. Is that based on the new school, or? No, the, the projections don't account for the, the new school. Those are, those are looking at the current boundaries and the historical enrollment and all the other factors that we were talking about. It does not, those do not reflect the added capacity that's that's going to come online with this new school that we're working with. Chris, did you want to say something? What you, what you may be seeing there, for as an example, if you're seeing a school that declines in enrollment, um, and again, this these this in the background data that builds these projections, it goes all the way down to grade level. What you may be seeing is a large fifth grade graduating out, with a smaller fourth grade graduating up behind it. So you have, a, a, you have a, an overall enrollment decline mm -hmm. and perhaps fewer kindergartners based on birth rates coming back in. So you, that, that's, those are some reasons that can lead to a school that, you know, even, even if it, even being overcrowded, that its enrollment may decline. Okay, and then for Vincent Farm, you know, it goes from 133% in 2017 to 156. That's a different story. Vincent Farm, if you look at the note at the bottom, um, Vincent Farms projections, uh, the, uh, now Vincent Farms projections are not yet adjusted for the relief that was allocated with the boundary change that's going to take place in 2018. So okay. they will, their, their enrollment projections will be adjusted as we, our next round of enrollment projections will, will roll out in January of 2018. And that will take into effect the most recent boundary changes that uh, that w that went along with the Vincent. Uh, I'm sorry, the Victory Villa scenario that redistricted the southern end of Vincent Farm Elementary School. Okay. The overall picture, the the bottom line that you see on your sheet there, does reflect the additional seats opening with the new school. 
as you look at the area-wide scenario. Good evening. Kathy, thank you for your question about parking at the new school. It has absolutely been a part of my conversation with the architects and the, everyone in BCPS. I, I'm concerned about parking, having lived at Vincent Farm for the last few years. Um, the parking is being considered, and the, you know, even the, the distance of the driveway is being considered in case we had an evening event. Could cars park on the driveway? Um, there's a lot of information that's going to come out about some changes to Joppa Road as well because I know parents are concerned about Joppa Road um, and the safety of getting buses in and out of the new facility and I, I know that that's on the radar of everyone in executive leadership. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Cropper if you can please comment on the upcoming parent communication meeting, parent information e meeting. I know that um, parents would like to be in more involved in this process and in I think it's two meetings from now we're inviting community members to come? That is that is correct. Uh, the, the public information session is, um, if I look at the next slide here, it is on October the 25th. So it's really uh, not, not long from now. We have another meeting on the 18th, which is where we where you are going to start uh, narrowing options in preparation for the public info session, trying to take maybe three or four, however many you feel are viable to take to the public info session. But the format of that public info session on the 25th is not uh, what you may have seen in some places where there's a, a microphone and people get in line and they come up and they start, they have three minutes to talk and, and, and voice their concerns. That's not the format of this public information session. The public information session is formatted more as, a, as an, in a, an enhanced data collection effort where we give the public a presentation and give them an overview on the process. And then we're going to have maps like, kind of like you see in the back here. We'll probably have three or four sets of those scattered around uh, a couple of sets so there's no bottleneck. And the public will be asked then to go and look at the maps. And the committee members are going to be standing around the maps evenly spaced to talk with committee members about that. And, and then really the, the real objective of that is to have the public fill out survey and provide input via a survey so that we can get input from as many people as possible as opposed to um, uh, a, a line of people, a select number of people who are brave enough to stand in front of a, a big crowd. So it's a different format than open mic. It's not an open mic opportunity, but it's a really good and effective way to get, to get maximum participation and input from the public. Okay, um, any other thoughts? I really, I you just can't tell you enough how, how proud I am of you as a committee and just thinking really comprehensively through all the data and information and considering things. I really appreciate the work and we as a, and the staff and everybody is really appreciative of all the hard work you've put and the thought you're putting into this. So keep up the good work. Um, we'll be back here on, on the 18th at the same time and, we'll, and that's, that'll be our fourth meeting. So um, thank you very much again, and you all have a great night, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.